We're back with a dirty stance. Good evening, everybody. We're here with another fine episode of entertainment, challenges, performance, hot talk, whatever the whatever the frig you like. We got. My yeah. name is Michelle. AKA Nasty Biatch. What's what's up, uh, na- Nasty Taco Biatch? <laughs> <laughs> I feel weird saying that to my dear friend, but it's it's a moniker designed. <laughs> you gotta call by people for you be by called. you. Yeah. You gotta call them what, exactly. You gotta, that's what I want to be called. So you. Uh, thank I don't you. know if. Yeah, I know Back you can say that about yourself, but am I allowed to say that about you? Submit, submit I, to the. We have consent. Yes. And last time that. I called, last time I called a lady a nasty taco, I went directly to jail. <laughs> I, did not, I didn't even pass go. No. That's right. There's certain counties wow. that it's not on in. <laughs> yeah, there's di- there's different uh, judicial uh, legislative uh, systems for different states. Mm-hmm. States yeah. rights, baby, right? New Hampshire, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Say, what's going on with you, Matt? What? <laughs> I don't want you to talk about your week, but I guess like I want us to be like acknowledge Matt your presence. Woodlands. Oh yeah. yeah. Matt, hey everybody, that, welcome. Good to be here. This is Matt Woodland. <laughs> Jeez. I'm the bad boy of uh, staying out whilst uh, unkempt, and uh, uh-huh. shall we say, I would even venture uh, to go as far as to say dirty. Two R's, like uh, Christina Aguilera's second album, The Strips. Thank you. Nice. Good detail. Hey, th- this is Ryan Arnold, and I'm plenty dirty, too, and unkempt, I'll have you know. I don't want you getting the idea that Matt <laughs> is more dirty or unkempt than any of the rest of us. He's just waving our flag for us. He's the <laughs> he's the dirt that represents the rest of the dirt. You're the, you're the dirt of the earth, buddy. Y'all, mother- y'all motherfuckers are merely dusty compared to me. Take a... <laughs> Fucking just bring G's with a feather duster and take <laughs> settle your hash right quick. <laughs> Me, I'm filthy, bro. I need uh, the fountain of youth to fucking cleanse my soul, baby. Dirty. <laughs> and you know, I was hoping to be the less filthy because I like being dirty, but I'm, you know, Ooh, I still want to be yeah. the, you know, the still attractive stay out, you know, the least dirty stay out. All right. So you guys, you guys could both be super filthy. I'll allow it. <laughs> We'll allow it. Well, now that we've got the, the the pecking order and the hierarchy all uh, arranged, don't forget it, Queen B. Michelle, right. Matthew, I've got, a, I've got a little uh, request. Please acquiesce to my demands, toot sweet. Would you please a taco about your week, my dear? Well, I thought you'd never ask again, boys. I have another taco bursting with flavor this week so many things i want to talk about what the hell (laughs) yeah i recommend monistat but that's just me oh (laughs) Oh, god the the innuendos have entered the podcast that's uh jumping the shark baby and if there's anything a man don't like it's a yeast infection ladies so whatever you want to do Remember, it's it front to back. It. <laughs> it's front innu- to back, ladies, not back to front. The innuendo has just left the building and been replaced with the very graphic literal. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the cold, hard light of day. <laughs> you have no idea where it goes. No um, idea. Well, so they listen. say that is the best disinfectant. Ah, go ahead. Yeah, so. it is. Uh, so listen, fellas. Really, let's get down to brass taxes. Hey. Uh so, you know, life here in the fungalo is just getting better and better. I'm making some updates, but it's been feeling a little lonely. So I can't have pets Aww. and I had to give up my dog. So I've been really missing dogs and having like a dog mm-hmm. for a companion. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I read online, like people sometimes get plants for their houses, you know, for their places. Cause it's, it's life. It brings life into their space. Wait, let me stop you there. You had you had to <laughs> you you only get now from online <laughs> have recognized that humans often have <laughs> what are you what are you a, a robot trying to pass the Turin test over here? <laughs> I want to have a human plant in okay. my house. That'll fool them. <laughs> okay, Matt. First of all, stinker, stinker. I, I for Dirty. one 
I, for one, completely stinker. support Michelle in her newfound interest of growing weed <laughs> in her house. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 5 0, 10 and 2, 10 and 2. <laughs> Dr. Green so Thumb over here. Right? You guys. <laughs> Okay, so oh yes, I, here's the thing. I had it. I had to research because I I don't have a green thumb. I've killed plants before, so like before I bring any li living, breathing thing into this house, I want to make sure that I'm well educated on how to take care of it. Um, I am now officially eight house plants deep. Uh, they all have names, and I also read online that if you talk to them and sing to them, it makes them happy. So that's what I do. It doesn't make me feel too crazy, but that's part of uh, my taco, uh, is that I've found something to nurture now. I'm not a mother. I'm not a uh, anything. I don't know why God put me on this planet as a female, because I'm not doing anything that we're meant to. But uh, let's see if I can take care <laughs> of some plants, you know? Let's call it, call it controversial, but I think women belong in the podcast. <laughs> oh, thanks. Keep Keep the women in the podcast. Keep the hey, women where they the belong. Hey, hey, Toots, put the put the headphones back on and get back to checking your levels of. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, sir. Hey, Indeed. honey, sit them gams right in front of that Zoom monitor. I don't. Hey, I don't know all the things. Hey, hey, Toots, why don't you go write me some jokes? <laughs> hey baby why don't you uh proactively segment this uh, uh whatever um i actually shouldn't have chimed in because i didn't have another one sorry <laughs> you should have to do truth or dare just for that oh, oh all right. okay all right. we'll save that for later so though, but I, hey. I already got one i'm one in the hole one in the hole one in the hole but hey guys are you ready for another installment of Nasty Man. bitch tell a Rico badass bitch in the kitchen. I am. Let's do it. Because I got a hot tip for everybody this week. You know, when it's cold outside, there's something particular that I like to make. And they're called thick dishes. Ooh. And let me tell you, listeners, my thick dishes are delicious. <laughs> I'm talking about lasagna. I'm talking about chili. I'm talking about meatloaf. And I don't know, you guys, I don't know if we have uh, any, between the two of you, any lasagna lovers. I'm going to say, <laughs> but I bet you our listeners, we got some dirty lasagna lovers out, out in the listener uh, world. I actually learned of a really cool hack. I wanted to share this with everybody because it's going to make lasagna making so much cheaper and quicker. I was reading a magazine and somebody actually used ravioli to make a lasagna instead of separate noodles and cheese. Jeez. So, yeah, game changer. It excited me enough. I'm well, like, Mich yeah, baby. Michelle, you asked if we like lasagna. If we were like lasagna, well, let's put it this way. I hate Mondays. You do the math, all right? Go, okay, Garfield. I get that answer. <laughs> all right. I'm going back. To always that. talking to me in riddles, Matthew. You're always talking to me in riddles. It's like I have to like prepare before I, I do this podcast with you. So you just you have to stack the rivolis. Do they do they stack proper? Like I feel like they might tumble. Am I am I barking up the wrong tree? Oh, my friend, let me. Matthew, I'm so glad that you brought up that concern. And I hope some of our listeners are thinking the same thing. Here's what stabilizes the ravioli. Go you on. make one layer and then like whatever kind of ravioli you're gonna make. If you're gonna have sausage in it, if you're gonna have ground beef in it, with the sauce, you put that layer on there with the Parmesan and then you do one more layer of ravioli. Uh, okay. And then you do that other thing. So it stabilizes it. And then you're just gonna have a nice like you know, you put a little mozzarella cheese in between the layers. I know you're not a cheese guy. I know that you, your dairy is not your thing, but just in general, that's kind of how it goes down. And that's how it sticks together, becomes a cohesive unit. And also I think kids will think it's fun. If any of our listeners are parents, I'm thinking about you. Kids will think it's fun. And but riddle me this, does it still, can you still slice, like, can, does it still slice like a lasagna or like, what? or is it like a, very, is it like a very fragile ecosystem where you like, you slice it and then it comes tumbling apart? These are the tough questions we must ask. Tough questions, but 
Awesome questions. Thank you for asking, because this is where I fucking shine, Woodland, so thank you. Mm. No, it's more cohesive, my friend, because sometimes the ravioli can stick together and get more congealed, so they form oh, like right, right, a bridge. Right. So it's like a bridge of togetherness, like stack whatever you want on us. We can handle it. Okay. Terrific. I love these questions. No further questions, Your Honor. Well, that concludes this week's Nasty Bitch, Badass Bitch in the Kitchen. Hey, guys, are you ready for one more installment of Michelle's Apology Corner? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, go, go ahead. This week's Apology Corner features our very own both Ryan Arnold and Matt Woodland. Oh, shocking. <laughs> Ryan and Matt, since you two are really the only people I communicate with during the week that I ever have a chance to screw things up with, possibly, I offer you this. <laughs> Listeners, I'm not trying to pull the shade, pull the curtains back too much on the dirty stayouts and how we process, but we had a meeting last week and it ran really long, which is great. I want to tell you the hierarchy in my life, stayouts, breathing and food. That's what it is. That's how I live my life. So we're having our meeting. I hadn't eaten anything since noon. And I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I am the person that suffers from the hangries and I get hangries real bad. I am legendary from my freak outs. And so there was a point where Matt was doing his joke about the grinders and I was laughing so hard I had to put my head between my legs because I felt dizzy. <laughs> and then I realized that I was really hungry. I hadn't eaten and I was about to pass out kind of. So then I started getting really crabby. Like, you know, when you get hungry and you can't focus. Uh -huh. And so it was kind of like a shark, like jaws coming up to the surface. I'm like, no, they're nice boys, Michelle. They're nice <laughs> boys. Don't let them see this. Don't let them see this part of you. Because I even got the nickname Mean Green once because it was that bad. I was barking at somebody for a brownie Sunday. Ugh. I didn't see that person for a while afterward. But uh, yeah. Barking at somebody for their brownie Sunday? A brownie Sunday. I was at a concert. Oh, cool. Okay. I was at a concert. I went to go see, just so I can name drop, I went to go see Helmet over at a place called, in uh, Minneapolis called Grumpy's. And it, oh, every place is open late. Oh, Michelle? That's oh, actually Matthew? not how, that's not how name drops work. You buy the ticket to go see, to go see a band. <laughs> <laughs> that's open to the, that's open to the public. That doesn't, that doesn't imply any special uh, curried favor. You're uh, super but, but special because you can, I'm so glad that you're here I'm to the point fact, these things out. I'm the fact checker. Back All right, go on. Go. Even if like Helmet was your uncle, I'm not sure if that would necessarily qualify in this All right. As an well, anyways, go on. a reference, if you will. I was seeing them yep. and it was late and I was really hungry and my blood sugar was low. Aww. And I wanted a blood, I wanted a brownie Sunday and I knew I wanted it, but my friends just wanted to sit around and drink and nothing gets me angrier. This is when hangry really comes out. Don't sit there and tell me you want to pound drinks instead of go get food. Food comes before getting drunk. Like if you have a friend getting hungry, fucking feed them. But no, no, none of my friends would ever do that, especially in Minneapolis. So I had no choice but to like refer to this Hulk-like individual. Anyways, I apologize to you guys because you got a little taste of it because it came up in just a little form of me complaining like, I was gonna go to Wendy's. Because I did say that. I was like, I was gonna go to Wendy's. Just to, I'm like, I'm gonna let them know I was gonna go. So, my apologies for letting a little hangriness seep out at you. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> go on. I have one last new segment called Michelle's Sorry Not Sorry Corner. And oh, guess fuck. who it features this week? Who Our that? very own Ryan Arnold. Uh -huh. Damn, you're about to get, you're about to get the, 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 th the thrashing of the new segment, buddy. I'm about to end it with honey too. So here we go. Ryan Arnold. Ryan Arnold, you do such a great job with editing mm -hmm. and putting our podcast out there. You're just, that's terrific. But I had to sit and listen while you forced me to call myself a crafter instead of a knitter <laughs> on this most recent episode. And I thought, wait a second. This Jedi knows not crochet. She knows not scrapbooking. She knows not painting. 
I only know one trade and that is knitting. I am a knitter. So Ryan, sorry, not sorry. I'm a knitter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? Doing lines from Blazing Saddles? <laughs> 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 Easy. Easy, oh Mel Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Shock Jock. Oh, Come on, Shock Jock. I am always so proud of where you can take these things sometimes. Just well, like... I mean, that it wasn't a huge leap. It wasn't a... <laughs> I was I was going to say something uh, at some point, too, but you just were quicker. I just, I, 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 I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm like a bull. I'm a bull in a china shop, but like Ryan's like a snake in the leaves and his are more precise <laughs> and subtle. And hence, much too valuable. And I'm just, I am just so eager that I just, I just jump out and I think of whatever the most obvious reference is and just like, ah, and I, and I preface it with like, ah, so. <laughs> wait, wait, I thought of, I thought of a good one. Michelle, can okay. you say the line again? <laughs> say it again. I'm a neater. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, not, you can't say the K word. <laughs> Well, <laughs> unless you are one. <laughs> well, not oh in front of Mel God. Brooks, anyways. All right, guys, that's my taco, anyways. Nanu Nanu, tell Rico out. Who's next, Matthew? <laughs> All right, Mindy. That would be genius. All right, Matthew. What's up, baby doll? About your week. Oh, guys, I just have a little simple week. I did actually uh, uh, venture out into in uh, foyer as a, I don't know if it tour, but perhaps that's how it is tour. I went and I did an IRL comedy event. I, it was uh, in a backyard in Connecticut and it was something we like to call a roast battle. Ooh, <laughs> roast exciting. battle, everybody. And my Lord, there's a reason why people stopped doing outdoor comedy after the summer was over. Daddy-o, that was frigid. I was trying to hold my notes and I couldn't like, um, I, you know, like when your fingers are so cold, like the only reason you know they exist is because you can see them with your eyeballs. Mm -hmm. It was like, I couldn't, like, I didn't know how to like, I didn't know how to grasp a, a small piece of paper for my notes. But anyways, that, that aside, it was so, uh, so fun. I mean, personally, I'm, I'm the kind of boy that uh, is, that's probably my, that's easily my favorite thing uh, in comedy is to do a roast battle. I like like the structure of it. I like that it's like you're right, you're saying a joke for the first time and you have to write it. And then you like work out like the little things like you figure out what kind of jokes work and how they work and this and that. And baby, I love this stuff. And I'm also, I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm a little bit uh, mean in nature. <laughs> I'm a little bit mean in nature. I like to think of it in a lovable way where we're all on board, but oftentimes it does take two to tango and my partner does uh, become upset. But that, hey, we're, we're getting better at these things. And um, it was great and I, I won handedly and then not to toot my own horn, but I also won joke of the night and I was also second place for joke of the night and I won some honey goat cheese. Ooh. That's right. I'll take my round of applause right now, friends. First Thank of you. Go That's on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got and first I, and second for the joke of the night. Is that? Were, well, the most. This is if if you ever want your ego to be uh, uh, pumped up in any way. There was a little hubbub and discussion. For there was judges. They're going over which jokes, and there's a slight disagreement of which joke should be first place. And then when I caught wind that they're arguing between two of my own jokes. That's when you feel like, you know what? <laughs> I see how people get away with abhorrent behavior with uh, just a little a little uh, inflation of the ego, my friend. Absolutely. Uh, and shout out, it was Brian Bargainer, Kate Clancy, uh, put on the, uh, some of the most lovely roast battles I've ever, uh, not that I've done a lot of roast battles, but such a fun time always, even in the freezing cold. And I'm going back for round two in February. So uh, stay yeah. tuned, get your tickets now. <laughs> I want to interject and I have to say my favorite, I have a Matt story, a favorite Matt story of when I actually Ooh. saw him roasting nobody he knew, nobody that, I don't think we knew them. Just it was at guy. Packers. It was one night yeah. and these kids were sitting over in the corner and uh, we didn't know them, but they started 
some crap a little bit. They started just picking on you about something. Uh-oh. I can't remember what it was, but you got up and you went over and you stood in front of them and you were like, looked at one of them. You're like, hey, Silent Bob works at Applebee's. Like, and then that's like, I only heard that and I started laughing and I was just couldn't watch the rest. I'm like, this poor guy, he's getting, he's getting from a pro. He's getting it from a pro. I was I proud what- of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I wonder what qualifies somebody as a as a pro. When do have we made? When are we going to make pro? What what would you say we're at right now? Are we on if the? You can, if you can are we the weeblos up. of comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know if, what? I couldn't roast. I can't roast. I can't roast. I can I can appreciate anybody that can roast and do that because you got to think on your feet. You got to think hard, hard, quick, and sassy. Yeah. Hard, quick, and sassy. Yeah, that's, what the, that's what they call the three of us. <laughs> now you just gotta yeah. work out for yourself which one's which. Okay, r- rank us, rank us, Ryan. Which one's hard, quick, and sassy? Right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You brought Go it ahead. up. Let's do it. Yo, damn. Who's what? All right. Hard, quick, and sassy. Damn. Well, I mean, none of us are particularly quick. Sorry, spoiler no. alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So, uh, uh, (laughs) so I say sassy, Matt, sassy, and your sassiness makes me hard. That's what's up. (laughs) That's what's up, motherfucker. Oh, man. Welcome to the law firm of hard, sassy, and hard. (laughs) Oh, you too. It doesn't work Uh, with just one sassy. Oh, you too. I knew you'd come up with something good. Well, Matt, I think that's awesome. I, I kind of, I kind of figured you for a guy that would uh, win a round of that kind of roast battle. I was pulling for you, so it's great that you made it to the second one. And so, listeners, know can we tune in, and where can we tune in to watch the next round? I usually they I guess both both times they've done the roast battle they they put it on a live stream, mm-hmm. but so far the live streams is it's unanimously both times somebody has kicked over the laptop, um, in <laughs> midstream. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> so potentially, um, I'll tell you what I have I have the audio recorded on my phone. So listeners, feel free to get in touch with me. Text me. Here's my number. Should you? We can give out. No, this is this is not a real thing. Like the, not. I could give out the number, but not. But also, that would be the idea, the audacity that I would think somebody would text me to give out the audio with no visual reference point of the my reference. Um, but that was. I was just thinking. It's like, but also the audacity for me to question, like, oh, should I give out my number on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just embarrassed myself. I Black embarrassed myself five. twice. Blah, blah, blah. Are you in the position where you could change your number if somebody started sending you like aggressive threats and or <laughs> I have to admit, the thing is, another reason why I like Rose so much is I am so what's I am incredibly flattered by insults. Mm-hmm. Um, if it, I just, I, oh, I just, I just let, it's probably some coping thing because, uh, I, uh, of, I don't want to be hurt. So I just, everything is good news. That's what I, that's how, what I worked out in my head. That's my mental gymnastics for the day. Is, is there anything like in particular, like a kind of insult or something about it that you find more, just any insult? If I was like, Hey, stupid face, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, well, I think it's because it's like it's, it's something about like about being insulted. If if they get you good, like it has, there has to be some like you know, the perception about yourself, and then you finally see and seen. It's like I go through my life yes. just being a stupid head, and then it's so like just to be like affirmed, like Ryan sees that I am a stupid head. <laughs> I must have a real friend in this world. I. Uh, <laughs> I, I totally get that that's how roast jokes yeah. make me feel I, but the idea yeah. of participating Kitty. makes me feel uh not not good you know right. like a like a heartburn type panic feeling mm-hmm. uh the one time that i thought about signing up for one of those roast battles i was like i don't know if i have it in me i'd rather uh, have a street fight and i would be terrible <laughs> at that too i'd be way better yeah. at roast battle than street fight and i'd rather do street fight <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'd rather do street fight. I 
I'd rather just blaze there. the world. Yeah. I did, do a, 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 I did what we call a boast toast also, which is, is just like a roast battle, but it pretty much, um, it is exactly what uh, you have uh, renamed glaze, ah. but there's this thing called a boast toast where it is you just trade uh, compliments to one another. Really? I think that's more badass because it goes against our society's uh, mm -hmm. heathen values of, of uh, negativity and irony. Yeah, it's good. It's all... It's all whatever, what anything competition mixed with, because honestly, like in my heart of hearts, I always wanted to be a competitor. I always wanted to, I wanted to be a contender, as the <laughs> my, the, the the paraphrase movie quotes uh, character goes. Um, <laughs> but it's like I never. But then it's like comedy, and it's I I kind of. I, when you're just doing comedy and it's not specifically like you versus this other person, it's like how do you know if you how do you know if you're the winner of comedy and and roast battles? It's very it's, it's just specifically narrowed down and structured, and there's a winner and a loser. And um, I I love the stuff, but it's also it also can be fraught with peril and stuff like that because then it opens up for some people just to just to scream um, unclever, just insulting things uh, like in a very uh, problematic ways and stuff. So it's you kind of have to have the right recipe. People signing up for it have to know what they're going. To. It's a lot about consent and this and that. Mm -hmm. So it, it is fraught with perils that we've definitely I've definitely witnessed over the years is and it, actual feelings being hurt in a big way. Is the judging like a big part of a roast battle, I would think, because one thing you're talking about comedy contests and one thing I've noticed about comedy contests is uh, the rubric usually doesn't have that much to do with who's the funniest or whose jokes are the best. Usually it's uh, some kind of networking popularity contest or who like brought the most people to so-and-so bar that night. So, uh, it, you know, does it, you get uh, judged on your jokes or is it a big jerk off? <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. There's different, there's different ways. And there's, there's some, there, there's some uh, battles where it's just, it's pretty much just like by a round of applause by, uh, by audience, which is sometimes can be skewed if like you are just some guy that brings a bunch of people. But generally I found that that's, that, that has actually worked out pretty well and pretty like, like it's been very rare that I've like felt like the audience wasn't correct about apl applauding. They're pretty insightful. And then there's been a couple times where uh, roast, uh, they've had just, uh, just like a panel of judges that judge it. And I've had really good experience with them too. Like that really, really astute uh, students of roast comedy and stuff. And I feel like, I, like they really are too, because I, I have the same thing. Like other comedy competitions I've been in have just been absolutely miserable. And like the criteria for like whatever it's got. Somehow I feel the roast battles I felt have been pretty in tune with, uh, uh, you know, fair and balance as uh, uh, Fox News says. Nice. That's do, do, do they go all eight mile like when you get a real good jab and does everybody go oh shit oh no you didn't <laughs> no you didn't oh that my god I, I wish that's my fan like that that, that truly is I, the problem yeah comedy does definitely not have the audience participation like a nice rap battle that's I would love somebody to say like in retrospect be like how is their set and then the, somebody would go like, motherfuckers were losing their goddamn mind. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did one one roast battle I had. An actual fight did break out totally n not within the comics. We're all just wuss nerds, frankly. But like it was just, it was this place in, uh, uh, oh, what well, was some dive bar in Connecticut. I can't remember the, the name offhand. It's been a while. But an actual fight happened, and I remember the uh, one of the roast competitors said, "This is supposed to be a roast battle, not an actual battle." <laughs> uh, it always stuck with me. It cracked me up. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the big laughs. I could have sworn that last line was going to be a play on words, but you zigged when I thought you were going to zag. Hey, comedy baby. <laughs> Hashtag misdirect. Am I right, ladies? Ryan. All right, that, well, that concludes my taco about my week. Thank you, guys. Woo! I uh, I I had a uh like a weekend where I didn't have to go anywhere or do anything. Which you ever get one of those once in a while? You have no responsibilities, yeah. and you're just like, I got some time to read and to watch movies. I caught up Hell on yeah. my uh, 
my uh, comic book subscription. I get uh, my comic books from a, a comic book store in East Hampton, Massachusetts, which is the only comic book store around for like, I don't know, got to be 50 or 60 miles or something like that. There used to be one in downtown Northampton out of business. And I assume that there are others in the area that I'm not counting Newberry comics. I mean, like, a, <laughs> right. you know, where you can go and you pick up your weekly because comic books come out every week. And so the only way to get them is that you pick them up from a, a store in a very like quaint old timey way. And uh, the long and the short of it is uh, Batman's black now. That's cool. Really? Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. I uh he's still rich, but that's okay. I think it's a step in the right direction. That's great. I guess you gotta be rich and black. I guess you gotta be uh rich. He's uh new money. He, yeah. Did you guys see that Batman movie where Morgan Freeman is in it? Oh good lord. I don't know which one was that? Uh the the Dark Knight Returns where Morgan Freeman builds both the Batmobile and the like Skynet like uh security matrix that spies on everybody in gotham city and then he quits because he's like this is terrible we shouldn't be spying on everybody i think i miss i think somehow i, I there's a few there, there's a couple spots in my my batman viewing i think i missed that one yeah there's a lot of batman movies it's like hey do you ever read shakespeare yeah. you know it'd be like oh that guy wrote a lot of shit that's just what batman's <laughs> like batman shakespeare yeah so that's pretty Damn. cool. We got a new black Batman. I, I'm in favor of it. You know, one day I hope we have a poor black uh, black Batman and not just a series of multicultural rich guys. But you know, one one step at a time, I guess. I don't know how you be Batman without millions of dollars. Well, and, uh, I was I was born a poor black Batman. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was <laughs> hitting it the, on the, the head. Worst? The worst, everyone. <laughs> Matthew, do I get the 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 reward for uh, the worst? Uh, the day's not over yet. The, the, right. That the night lady is young. has right. not sang. Oh. <laughs> and I sang. Sang. I probably watched like seven movies over over the weekend, over uh, Saturday and Sunday. Nice, dude. Yeah. Uh, do me a quick favor and uh, list them in in uh, order of preference. Starting with seven. <laughs> but not number, because you don't like numbers. You don't like the number system. Well, I get lost very quickly. You know, trying to use the number system, <laughs> I I go on a tangent, and then I'm like, what was I up to? Two? And that's how we get four-hour-long episodes. We get, yeah, yeah, that's we of, get that's true. Ken Burns presents the Dirty Stay Outs. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to... <laughs> But I was oh, I was watching these movies and I noticed something that if I'm in my house and there's people around and I have neighbors and I have a landlady and everything, I feel like a lot more self-conscious during a sex scene than I do during a, a violence scene. And oh, I yeah, I became aware of that more so with every movie. And I thought that's crazy. It's a total product of of America, how we're sort of raised to be like violence is cool and sex isn't and it's like uh what you know what am i doing that i don't mind if the if the neighbors or my my housemates are hearing uh, you know the sounds of torture the sounds of evil but yet i would hate for them to think that i was looking at a lady's bottom you know that's ridiculous that's good that's a good thought it's true that's right i mean it's right? good that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a astute societal uh, observation. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so like really. That's my astute my societal observation. Watch, noise. <laughs> it is when true. my mom that, let me watch Facebook <laughs> when I was twelve, that was actually a good thing because I was learning about sex from Sharon Stone and Michael Douglas. No. The best it is people true, to I'm, learn it from. It, <laughs> right. Even still, when I was a kid, I saw what what whatever the the remake like American Werewolf in, uh, whatever the new place was with the uh, Paris the, with the that's the one yeah. with the 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 Bush <laughs> the Bush uh, song in it, and then I remember. <laughs> meanwhile, like there's all these were like just like gobbling up people in those parties. But that the second time when she took off her shirt and the boobs came out, I just remembered to be just wildly embarrassed because I was like sitting there with my uncle and stuff like that, mm. and just like. 
she's like, wow, when is this like, when is this value instilled in us? Like, like even like a, a mere bosom. It's just like, this is the, ay, ay, ay. You're just thinking, I can't wait till somebody fills that bosom full of lead so I can stop feeling awkward about it. <laughs> Am I right? High five. Well, it's, Come on. Well, yeah. It's like when I was watching like Irreversible, it's like, it's like the nudity. It's like, ah, I don't know about this. But then when the actual, the unconsensual sex happens, that's technically violence. So then I'm like, okay, this is okay with me now. Oh, a bad, <laughs> bad analogy. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, just a just a little joke. <laughs> in my head, I'm desperately trying to think, trying to connect that scene in Irreversible to the that Capitol police officer who got hit in the head with a, a fire extinguisher, like in Irreversible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't pull you, it off. You're almost there. You. <laughs> I have not seen this. We're not, I have not we're seen not the, this movie, but I'm writing it down because now I'm gonna see it. It's I, I would fit there's a few movies that it, for just like for the reference. There's a few movies that are that how about that for a top three? Top three <laughs> well, only see the name drop. Reference like there's top three like uh, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> well that's I think like, that's what you're saying. <laughs> There's a couple movies that you go to for like rape references for in cinema. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. Irreverse, okay. Irreversible no. is like one of the more obscure ones. <laughs> you got, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Deliverance. Deliverance. Yeah. Deliverance. Classic. yeah. Deliverance. Have eyes. The Accused. That's uh, oh, very sure. uh, the, 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 the The girl with the, the dragon tattoo, Fincher uh -huh. Joint. Last I House on the Left. Brave. There you go. Yep. Yep. Uh, the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Remember that kid? Oh. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I really want to watch Outlander. I really started getting into Outlander because I love the story and I love the romance of it all. But I cannot get past like every other episode. There's a rape scene in it and nothing turns mm. me off more. So it's like, I don't even bother watching it. I'm at the beginning of season two, rape scene. It's like, huh, well, I guess I'll watch something else. Like uh, Michelle, you're going to want to skip Oz. <laughs> I heard that was a good show, though. Isn't that no. the one about prison? I love no. Oz. It, it is. The, what, what the Tin Man did to the cowardly <laughs> love. <laughs> the secret love story. <laughs> oh. The no wonder I like courage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Thank oh, you. Oh, God. All right. Ah, rape. What can you say about it? I don't know. We'll say so. we'll, 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 we'll put something in the description of the episode. Like, we don't like it at all. Yeah. We do not stand behind it. On this episode, we talk about things we don't like, such as hot takes. No, uh, call me old fashioned. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the Dirty Stay Outs, the premier anti rape podcast. Yeah, that's exactly how it should be labeled. Frame it, frame it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, guys. <sighs> I think it's about time to spice things up a little bit. Oh, that's, I think we're pretty good. <laughs> How do you get more spicy than the Because they were It's time to talk wild. about necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Always an opportunity for me to put my foot in my mouth. Here we go. Necrophilia. I have to tell you something. Now you say necrophilia. Uh, there was, when I was in middle school, <laughs> oh no, never mind. I can't. I won't. Nope. For another day. Here we go. <laughs> when I was so speaking of necrophilia, when I was in middle school, oh my, talk about blue balls. Oh, I'll do this for you guys. I'll do this for you guys. What? What? Next week, I'll have right. to tell you about oh. the time ah. I illegally solicited sexual obligations <laughs> from a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> obligation. How can a court? What is a court? Uh, how can they be obligated? Can you You're imagine right. dying? And like the Again. one good thing about being dead is at least you don't have your obligations. But meanwhile, here comes Michelle <laughs> obligating you. Please. <laughs> I would feel like a goose <laughs> if I was a corpse. So. They have special alerts for people like me. Keep away from dead people. All right, guys. Let's <laughs> Not even I the have to dead wear are safe. Bracelet. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the M Night Shyamalan cutting room floor. You just have to <laughs> knock on the. You have to knock on the door of all your neighbors and say like, "Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, and I am a middle school necrophiliac." <laughs> That's it. That's a, It's awful, but I do it. But I right. brought you some pork rinds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what you got, Mama? This is from our beloved Matthew Woodland. Great. Oh. Another one. That's, it's not going to be applicable. That's, that's what I want to know. <laughs> you know we can, I'll give you the option if you want to entertain this one or if you want me to draw again. But All right. okay. I think this is going to be a pass. Let's hear it. All right. Who looks like mashed potatoes? <laughs> All right. I'll play. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play that. Okay. I'll play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Dude, that's good. Looks like mashed All right. Potatoes. I'll take time. All right. I got a couple. <laughs> I got a couple off the top of my dome, but I, th I think they're the obvious ones. Uh, all right. What's that guy? Do you want me to start? Do you, do you got one? You want to take turns? Ryan, you guys what's, want to have a chance to go first? What's that guy who's the English prime minister right now? Boris Johnson. He <laughs> yeah! first like yes! the ma mashed potatoes. That's who I saw in my mind's eye before you were even 100% done. That's it. Boris Johnson. He looks... He looks like mashed potatoes, but you put like a tiny bit too much milk in. You can't bring it up. Like it's a little bit like it's, it's almost right, but it's a little too loose. Yeah. Can't salvage them. Nice. Who you got, Michelle? Oh, uh, that guy from Baskets. He plays Baskets Mom. Louis oh, Anderson. Louis Anderson. Yep. Anderson. He looks like a lot of fucking mashed potatoes. Damn, he does look like I mashed potatoes. I just said mashed potatoes. Like... potatoes. Like yeah, I'm like... Louis Anderson. He has, is that voice? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they, they, uh, rah, rah, rah. My dad used to do me, man. Lucky, uh, what was it? Life, Life with Life Louie. Life with Louie, yeah. Saturday morning cartoons, baby. Feed the chickens, oh, go watch yeah. Life with Louie. The Matthew. The Matthew. You gonna uh, feed chickens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Feed my chickens. <laughs> what am I trying oh. to do here? Yeah. Feed yeah. my chickens, baby. Yeah, I did. Um, all right, Matthew, what you got? Who looks like potatoes? I got a couple off the top of my dome. My first one is like, oh, it's, it's got to be quintessential, dude. We got to go Alfred Hitchcock. Somebody oh, looks like mashed potatoes. Right on. <laughs> Every part of his body looks like mashed potatoes. Good, yeah. good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Good yeah, Larry evening. Flynn really stole a lot of, a lot of his gimmick. Mitch McConnell almost looks like mashed potatoes too, but it's like his face. It's just his face. He looks like fingerling mashed potatoes. Yeah. Can I... <laughs> oh, that's true. Here, let me yep. rattle off a couple because I got <laughs> a couple off the top of your dome. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, Frank Black looks like mashed yes, potatoes. Yes. Matt yep. Pinfield looks oh, like mashed yeah. potatoes. Good potatoes, yeah, smooth. Kyle Gass looks like mashed potatoes. <laughs> he's basically, he's got a, basically he's got a any loose fat, ball. bald, white guy looks like mashed potatoes. Do you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but there is actually like a classification out, out in Northampton specifically for a certain type of guy that chicks dig. And I heard a friend say it. It's because you see a lot of guys around here that are bald, but they have the beards. Potatoes, potato guys. They're not called. They're called beardy baldies. I guess it's like a thing. Like <laughs> somebody is lying to you. <laughs> you think can't be right. Beard, beardy you know, what they guys. Lies to me is you, Ryan. When you're trying to trick me. <laughs> <laughs> I take advantage of my gullibility. I think that's that just I, 
used to be able to temper my sincerity with my jokes and i think <laughs> like I, I think i got to the point where i can't because it's it's come up in in life where people are like i just can't tell because for a long time maybe you guys can relate to this that as a comedian one of the things that you have to learn is to be able to say your ridiculous thing with a straight face because when you're a kid mm -hmm. and you think of a funny joke you start giggling before the end of it and fucking ruin it completely yeah. and so as a comedian i found one of the things to do is that you have to sell your ridiculous punchline completely stone-faced and unfortunately i found that that has carried over into my life and made me difficult to understand <laughs> <laughs> You just, you've never come out. Yeah, you, you never, you never give the tell. You're just completely stone faced forever. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's an interesting point. Yeah, because that kind of, that skill of just like no selling with your face and like, frankly, misleading with your facial expressions. And then, but yeah, but then you're kind of trained. So then you kind of like deliver any other line with that same kind of protection of sort of uh, obscuring what the, the reality of what you're trying to say is. That's a good, that's a good, oh, wow, he's really gunning for the uh, astute observation <laughs> award. <tonight>. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, but Michelle, what would that, um, uh, that, uh, what would a sex party of those kind of women be called? Bangers and mash? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> We're I not the have it any other way. We're not the quickest podcast, but we will bring, we will shoehorn a thing that's much uh, from a long time ago, and then and then uh, to to bring, make our dumb joke. Oop, I had trouble Ooh, explaining that. that. I had trouble. Gravy. Have, that was have, sorry. <laughs> that was that was. I was thinking about the sex party, and but yep. then if DMX walked in, he would yell gravy. Would he really? Yeah. Would he? Michelle said in all sincerity, would he really? Would he really <laughs> say that at that party? Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Michelle, uh, Michelle never had. What isn't real? He lies to me all the time. Michelle <laughs> never had an ironic thought in her life. It's all face value. <laughs> I'm having a good Your time. face antagonizing me right now at the bottom of my screen. Yeah. Yeah. My face is above you on my screen. That's weird. Crazy. <laughs> Zoom talk. Zoom, Zoom, uh, Zoom talk. I was going to uh, say that. I can't remember what, what I was. Oh, the chief Chief O'Brien from Deep Space Nine. Some bitch looks like uh, mashed potatoes. Oh yeah. Kind of like dirty mash though, like maybe like a red mash where you didn't take the skin off. Mm. Oh, dirty mash. But don't call All it right. dirty mash. That's really delicious. Not but until you call it dirty mash. <laughs> OMG. You little rascal. Matthew, you scamp. Uh, All right, good. Do you think we exhausted the who looks like mashed potatoes <laughs> segment? Surprisingly, went over gangbusters, I must say. Nothing he makes me more happy sentence. than when we get like a surprise one that like dipping sauces and casserole yes. too that we like i was How surprised we? that we all jumped right into it and we're like yes motherfucking now yeah yep. and you wouldn't know that until it hits you like it's just like oh how could that be like what a bad to what a horrendous topic nobody would bandy that topic about and wow it worked and my, my batting average for throwing topics out there is abysmal I've, I mean, don't forget, this is the guy that came up with uh, uh -huh. pretty much write a whole <laughs> def defend your thesis on Fiona Apple, somebody that nobody on the <laughs> podcast cares about. That was, that was the most intricate, but it's up to you, man. It was cerebral. Hats off to you. It was cerebral. That was the thing. It's just like, hey, guys, you don't mind if I just take half an hour to pontificate about my feelings about this artist you guys don't care about, right? Classic. Yeah, mashed potatoes though that's a one for the w i'm always wondering like anytime i pull anything from this cup i wonder how outrageous it's going to be and like is it going to be what could it be it's going to be a matthew woodland special whatever it is truly outrageous like anna truly nicole outrageous. smith is this cup going to be half full or half empty we'll find out mm -hmm. all right I michelle i keep it. meaning to tell you that to your yeah. on over your right shoulder there is this shadow on your ceiling that to me, and maybe this is a Rorschach test, 
it looks like the outline oh of a person with their arm outstretched, like as if about to stab you, a la Psycho. Ryan, I see it and it's freaking me out now. Things are pointing <laughs> it out. Wait, 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 wait. Michelle, what's that? Right what's there, that? Right? <laughs> Michelle, what's that noise? Seriously? Oh, do you think that guy, do you think that a grudge might be afoot? Okay, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> not cool. Because you know what? No, what, you know, no, 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 no. I had, I woke up last night from, I have a recurring dream where there's somebody in my house and I'm laying in bed because I can't get out, but I'm screaming for help, but nobody can hear me. I had that dream like the, like last night or the night before that. And now this, and now this. And now this. Wait, oh no, Michelle. There's a lady climbing out of a well behind you. Oh no. So anyways, that's your grudge thing in the ring, all that crap. I, <laughs> yeah. The worst thing is like, I'd imagine like the hair coming out of the corner, like from the grudge, you know, when her hair comes out first of the corner. I and remember, then yeah. she comes out and then she does a, uh, Oh, you uh, definitely, I, yeah, that's the, that's the sound. What was I doing? <laughs> I really didn't have the sound effect on that. But I don't do much. I don't do much Foley work for horror movies. We're gonna dub. We dub over you, Matt. We're gonna put the sound in over what you did. Dub over me. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, oh. I have to stop free associating. Ryan, don't ever, don't ever for... stop. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, baby. That's <laughs> don't crazy change. that you caught that though, Ryan. That is fucking crazy. Well, he hasn't he hasn't moved since we started, so I think you're okay. Yeah, as long as he doesn't does at least the, if the demon doesn't possess you, then it's just when I before I said anything, it for sure looked like a murderer with their hand up. But now that I've said something, it looks like uh, somebody like maybe holding a seashell to the air. Like, oh, do you yep, want to yep. know what? The worst part of it was with the urgency with which you mentioned it to me. I think it was the way you brought it up that got me because I, I, before you even like all the words came out of your mouth, my spine was just like this. And I'm like, what is he going to say? I know he's got something really like something crazy is going on. And I was right. Shadow puppets. I'm freaked out. Your friend, Shadow Liz, puppets. My favorite Shadow Fiona puppets. Apple song. <laughs> Shadow Puppets. My favorite <laughs> band is actually the last Shadow Puppets. We won't get into it though. Oh, save uh, it for top three spoiler alert. Yeah. Oh, actually, things are gonna what? start. Things are gonna start. Every everything's been spicy. But guys, let's have a good time. Don't threaten me with a good time. Let's do some trivia. Yeah, How let's spice that? it up. Yeah, cha 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 trivia. Let's have some cha, fun. Cha, 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 trivia. Matthew, you oh. did an exemplary job of running trivia last time. I'm wondering if you were planning on taking the reins again this evening. Whoa there, Nelly. I'll grab those reins. <laughs> oh. Did he just call me a horse? <laughs> Yeah, but of he course, called you course. Nelly, and if you remember Dudley Do Right, Nelly was the horse he was in love with, right? Oh or was, my God! Good or, connection. Sorry to jump on you. Or was Nelly the lady? No, I think Nelly oh. was the horse. I want to give you the credit because that's nice. Somebody check that. He's also gunning for free asso free association uh, trophy award. All right, baby dolls. Welcome to Trivia Boys with us, the Dirty Stay Out Trivia Boys. Um, <laughs> okay, you guys, first and foremost, uh, our contestant today, what is your buzzer sound effect? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm using okay. the uh, acute observation uh, noise. I'm doing kitty cat. <laughs> okay. All right, we got a little kitty cat and we got a little wah 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 style. I'll be Charlie right, Brown's parents. <laughs> Legendary, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, contestants. Pump it. The category is now and forever will be movies. And I'm going to read a question. We have four different categories. Of course, it's comedy cartoon action adventure 
drama, musical, horror, sci-fi. We'll go through each and every one of them. And we all take turns being the hosts and take turns being the contestants. Are you guys ready for your first trivia question? Ready! You can be the big spoon. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> Ave Tortuga. Okay, so we have... <laughs> uh, our first category, of course, or as I like to say, category, is comedy slash cartoon. Yes. Are y'all ready for this? Oh, here's, I might not be able to read this person's word, but I'll do my best. What Ralph Bakshi <laughs> cartoon features drugs, sex, and cats? Meow, 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 meow. Fritz the cat. Wah, wah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I fucked it up. Sorry. Oh, he got it wrong. So he has to do truth or dare. No, I got it right, but I forgot to buzz in. Yeah, he got it. Mich Michelle, were you, what were you, uh, 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 what were you going to say for your answer? It doesn't matter. I was going to get it wrong, so I'd rather not say. Well, let's, <laughs> let's let bygones be bygones here. So that's vo <laughs> void. So that's that's what we call null and void. <laughs> but Michelle, Yay. what were you going to say? <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. Because like, I was like, maybe there was. That's, I don't see why not. No, that that actually, that's probably something I would have guessed, too. I don't sure. think I would have got that. Oh, but the fine. answer was, was Fritz the Cat. But of course, in Jeopardy, he did forget to form it in the uh, the phrase of a question. That's what got Alex Trebek. So we're moving right along. I'm going to go still give Ryan the, the point. If it, if this is a democracy, I say give him the point. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but <laughs> this is no democracy, baby. <laughs> Feed him to the lions. <laughs> So Ooh. the score is zero 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 love. Rough. Ugh. All right. And next, we gotta have rules. Okay. Uh, or else we have anarchy. This is coming from Ryan. We've got to have rules, Mr. Chaos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Chaos. What the hell? <laughs> All right, you guys. Action adventure, everybody. The category is, of course, movies. What is the setting for Speed Two Cruise Control? Wah, wah, wah. A boat. Right? Is that is that what they want? A cruise ship? Yes, absolutely. In, in the, in and the it water. was multiple. It was multiple choice, but Ryan did not need the multiple choice. Damn it! I think isn't Dennis Hopper the main villain in Speed Two? If I'm remembering correctly, he is. that was stupid. That yeah, sounds right. And it, Jason Patrick. It's not even Keanu Reeves. It's Jason Patrick. Wait, is Dennis Hopper also the villain in Waterworld, or am I? Is that James Caan? Who who am I thinking of? Because is he like a water? Is he like a big water villain guy? Like a mermaid? Yeah, who's up? There's somebody that's like in the Dennis Hopper category <laughs> in Waterworld, but <laughs> I put James Conn in the Dennis Hopper category because I'm ignorant. <laughs> I can everybody, see let's go into drama musical, everybody. All right. What independent movie took home the best picture Oscar in 2009? Meow, 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 meow. Michelle. Was it Rent? Oh, sorry. Is this a sorry. multiple choice? Or? Sorry. No multiple choice. No multiple choice. Okay. Um, shit, 2009. What is it? The best independent musical? What independent movie took home the best picture Oscar oh. in 2009? And the category is drama slash musical. Shit on me. I chose what I chose because I thought it was a musical. Sorry. I chose uh, what I chose. <laughs> and that's you all that I chose. What, you chose what you chose. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't have an answer. No steal? No. The answer was, everybody, a little something we like to call straight out of Bollywood, Slumdog Millionaire. I wouldn't have gotten that. Oh, damn. I wouldn't have gotten that either, but it was a great movie. Didn't Terrific see it. Movie. Jaho. All right, everybody. The fourth, the the fourth and final category is oh. horror slash sci-fi. What movie sees Will Smith searching for a vaccine against a virus that turns people into meow, mutants? Meow, meow, meow. <clears throat> meow, meow, meow. I know it. Wait, Wait we have a little. On you. 
We have a little, we actually have a typo on this card. <laughs> really? Okay, well, answer the question, but I don't think I have the answer here. And I'll tell you what happened. Go ahead, Michelle. I am legend. What is I am legend? That sounds right, right? But you know what they put for the answer? What? What? Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to look it up? No, I'm pretty sure that I think, is the that sounds right. Answer. We're gonna give you that. We're gonna on the honor system. We're gonna give you the point. But so what is it now? I, is it one one? We got I one one zero be. after round Ooh. after round one. And who shall be the next? Who shall be the next host? I'll go, I'll go next. All right, Ryan. All right. And Matthew's uh, ringing in. It uh, thing is gonna be <clears throat> la 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 la. Okay, I'll be able to remember that. Michelle, are you going to stick with the kitty cat noise? Or do you want to? Fine. I'm going meow, 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 meow. Yeah, but they're different. Oh, I can I tell the yours? I can tell the difference. How about this? Go, it on purpose go at a different meow. frequency. Go lower. Go lower. La, 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 la. Yeah. How, meow, do you, how about. Meow, meow, meow. No, not both of you. One of you goes lower. I'll go lower. I like the Okay, count. you go lower. All right, you go lower. I'll go higher. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> like okay. Michelle Obama, when you go low, I'll go high, baby. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Okay. All right. In the category of comedy cartoon, the first clue is as follows <laughs> What is Bill Murray's job in Groundhog Day? La 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 la. Meow, meow, meow. That, I think that was Matt. Damn it. No. Um. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get this right. Is it? Uh, oh, was he? Uh... It's trivia if he doesn't get it. It's, it's <laughs> dare if he doesn't get it right. Oh, what was it? It was something TV. Was he like a weatherman or something? He no. was a TV weatherman. Yes. He was. Yes. He was a TV <laughs> weatherman. Oh, the, the <laughs> look. <laughs> Michelle looks like she was just robbed. Like I can't believe. <laughs> Look at that arrogant look on his goddamn face as he stumbles through the answer that I so rightfully deserve. <laughs> That's what I just, your face is saying. I always, if if I, I, I don't know, there's no reason, because I know the answer, but I just was like, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so wrong. Because I think the idea of answering an obvious question wrong is like mortifying for me. Now it looks like the shadow on your wall is going, oh shit. You know, like, <laughs> like I just, I just, first I of just all, got, <laughs> the second I just, this guy stepped on the playing floor was mental warfare with his little ring in tone being close to mine. It's been mental <laughs> warfare the whole time. Yo, I just, I just hit you with a, a snap of a rap, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, rabbit did. Yep. Just like rabbit. Brittany yeah. Murphy's going home with me. Oh, speaking of oh, the dead. Too a, fucking oh, soon, yeah, bros. Eight mile. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. Hey, what <laughs> the next category is action adventure. And the question oh. is follows. <laughs> what war was raging in the good, the bad, and the ugly? Which war? La 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 la. I think that was mad. <laughs> was it the Spanish American War? Nope. <laughs> Darn. Guess what? Michelle, do you want to? I, I got I got one for I got two for Oh, I instead of stealing it, I'd like the option to pose truth or dare to Matt for getting uh, it wrong. Matt, do you accept? Uh yeah. I'll okay. already I, I, so I'm t I'm two in the hole for truth or dare now. All right, he's two two. Do you want him to do it right now, or is he just he knows he's got to do it later? It's gonna weigh on him. We can uh, we can save it up. So let the yeah let the let the hole. tension build. Let him stew in yeah. it for a little bit. You know. Let me stew. So I'm up to two, and nobody else got a. Um, and you guys were a dead. You guys were a dead heat for. Ryan Ryan, bringing in wrong and. That we don't, nobody, no truth or dares were doled out for that time that no. you and uh, Michelle. So that, that's a that's a clean break, clean break. Okay, so Matthew's in the hole for two truth or dares. Just keeping the scores here proper. Okay, got it. And I do not have a guess. I don't know, to be honest with you. You don't know I, what war? I, Say any more. I don't know. 
Just any the any war? Say the civil war. That is correct. No, sir. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, actually. I want that yeah. point. I'm taking that point. Even yeah. though I didn't want to answer it, I'm taking it. There's, I mean, there's only so many wars, so the, uh, you know, your likelihood of good job. Good All right, Michelle, do you want to take the point? But then I'm taking away a truth or dare. Whoa, we're kind of at a, okay, fair enough. I'll take the point if you want to take All away right. one of your truth or dares. You, you got, got it. For a rainy day, sunny boy. All right. I see I don't know you how at I the crossroads. <laughs> so you can be lonely at the crossroads. I'll see you, my uncle. Sorry, I'm gonna miss everybody. I'm gonna miss everybody. Glazy bone. <laughs> the next category <laughs> is drama musical, and the question is as follows: What illicit business does Vito Corleone not want his family to get la, into? La 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 la. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Uh, narcotics. Uh, yes, that is that is correct. Yes. Uh, narcotics is a dirty business. <laughs> okay, baby. The fact that he thinks he's like, yeah, yeah, we kill people, but drugs is what'll sully our good name. It's like, what kind of a ah, anyway? The last category on this here card, card number twenty. If you're keeping track at home, I am. <laughs> I am keeping track. Horror sci-fi. The question is as follows. As a group follows. of scientists finds a way to travel back in time in what low budget movie? The, the, the Time Traveler, Starship Troopers, or Primer? Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Fucking A. I have to do that one. No, I didn't have to. I chose it. Mich Michelle. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the the first one, please. The time traveler. Yeah. See, that's what you would think would be a group uh, a movie about uh, traveling back in time, but that's where they get you. It is Primer. Ooh, can I steal it? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I don't think you could steal multiple. Yeah, choice, multiple probably, choice because right? you yeah, get an unfair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so perfect. I'm marking myself for truth or dare to be fair. All right, I have. Okay, so going over the scores, let's compare notes, Michelle. I have for the game. I have Michelle at two, Matthew at two, Ryan at one, and for the truth and dare, I have Michelle at one and Matthew at one. I got the same thing. Beautiful. This, look at this. This week, tables have turned. Right now, Matthew and Michelle are in control. And right now, Ryan needs to catch up. He needs yeah, to... Yeah, the, uh, the movie king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Undisputed movie king. <laughs> and that's after round... Um, do we do... Are we going for the second round? Oh, yeah. we're going second, third. We're going to keep this puppy rolling until we're out. Maybe the well, second then, round, yeah. Well, I think Who we... I think I'll... I think I only set you enough for two rounds. <laughs> Tur turning this mother out. All right, you guys. Oh. MC Second Hammer. And final round. Turn this mother out. Now I need to listen to MC Hammer. I've got two cards. I've got two cards. That's right. So that's why that's we're doing right. the second round. <laughs> it's scary that I'm in finance. It's scary that I work in finance because I'm horrible at math and simple counting. I don't know how I do it. Two cards, definitely two cards. Got to go to Kmart. All right, guys. <laughs> For real. All right. JK. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. All right. So second round coming through. Get around. First coming category. Of course, is comedy. Sla oh, and do you guys? What are we doing for buzzers? Are we switching it up? Wait. Matthew, <laughs> yep. wait. Go on, Do Michelle. Do I answer my question? Do I ask my questions that I have on my trivia cards? Yep. Oh, we, wait we, a minute. Did I? Yeah, we skipped, we skipped you. Sorry about that. Did I just skip Michelle entirely? How could you? Oh, I am. My, my many apologies. No wonder, no wonder the confusion. No wonder the confusion. I, it, it, I got confused. Yes, Michelle. So we're still hot in the first round. Yeah. I, you guys, I'm going to give myself, yet. I'm going to give myself one more truth or dare for the mishap. I have to. I have to reap what I've Michelle sown. Michelle likes that idea. 
I love that idea. And I totally, what? I'd be remiss. She's going to make it's you put because... so much corn down your pants. Oh, oh no, it's, it's so it's no wonder. Down. It's going to go up something. So now this is when Ryan, <laughs> this is when Ryan jets right back into, into the lead. We, I, I knew the numbers were off. I knew the numbers were off. <laughs> That's why we don't right. have referees. Is so I apologize. You can cook the that's book. All right. that's and I'm gonna right. I'm gonna retain my la 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 if that's okay with everyone. Oh sure. Yeah, and I was just gonna say it's because I'm dropping it down to a baritone. That's probably why I'm disappearing. Is like I don't get to do my cue. It's right. Meow, meow, meow. It's true. Well, sound cute. travels because the vibrations are more like wide apart, so it doesn't travel as quickly. When I am next in charge, I will demand <laughs> that you guys switch buzzers. <laughs> Beautiful. Ryan for president. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so my throat's all dry from bringing it down to Bear Town. I don't. All right. Bringing it down to Bear Town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In what? Okay, comedy cartoon. In what year did the cartoon character Mickey Mouse first appear in a movie? 1928. 1936 or 1941. Do you want to hear him again? Wah. Matt, uh, you're uh, muted. Matt's muted. Not fair. Matt's muted. Is he doing that on purpose? I hello. Can't it, that it was pretty fitting though because um I had nothing. Oh. I was saying nothing. So I actually have a button on my uh, headphones that I never used before, and I must have inadvertently pushed it. And maybe that's okay. maybe muting happened. I don't know. I don't know how things work. Well, then I think Ryan. Uh, I think it's 1930. Uh, whatever the second one was. 19... Incorrect, Ryan. Oh shit. Oh, Ryan gets a truth or dare tally. Ooh. And since oh. it's multiple choice, I shall not be stealing. <laughs> okay. But just so you know, it's 1928. Well, what okay. agree, do you do? <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Um, <laughs> I, I spent like the first five seconds of that question trying to figure out if Matt had himself on mute just to mess with me. I it totally, I was totally disoriented. I'm like, what is this guy doing? I feel like every stretch of the bend has got to figure you out for something. All right, here we go. You're muted again. Ah, lots of, lots of fun. Oh, good. <laughs> that all stays in the podcast. <laughs> that deafening silence, the whole thing. That all plays audio. Beautiful. It's fucking legend. I love it. That was so funny. And only now am I coming around to... <laughs> the possibilities with Zoom. <laughs> oh, the power that you wield. It's fucking glorious. That was great. Uh, so Ryan just systematically. Uh, <laughs> he just, he pretty much deplatformed us, which, you know, you've heard about this on the news. Just one at a time. <laughs> So our propaganda diatribes will not get out there and corrupt the youth. Listen. Oh, where were we? This is the first time I've ever felt like I'm in over my head with you two because I don't know. I I don't know what to expect. Okay. This is like this is like the games the gaslighting games light party all over again. <laughs> that yeah. was we that was our listener now knows what it feels like to be trapped in the cold vacuum of space. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they that's what they just experienced. They were riding high <laughs> on the good ship taco, and then all of a sudden, uh, somebody burst a hole in the side. They were sucked out into space. The very last thing that they heard in their entire life was the <laughs> deafening. Silence of no hosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? 
<laughs> this is not a podcast. This is a this is an art project, baby. It is. Theater this is a fucking mind. mural. What were they doing? What were they doing the whole time? I was crying. Oh no! This I'm reading this one. Oh wait, no, I'm jumping too far ahead. I'm sorry. All right, action adventure. Sorry for the strong reaction. Action <laughs> adventure. Sorry, not sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> in how many movies does Daniel Radcliffe play Harry Potter? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Matthew? I would like to say nine. You are wrong. Oh. Another. Back to two for Matthew for truth or dare. I think right. it's seven. I'm up to three. Is it seven? Well, I thought you took one back. Yeah, I'm up to oh. three now. Three. All right. Oh, all right. Well, Brian, what did you say? I said seven. Please enjoy two truth or dares, Ryan. I will. Oh. It's eight. Was it ten? Eight. Oh, split Shit. the difference. Eight. Because one's a two-parter. Right? Yeah, uh, the two-parter always t- tricks me. Do you want to know something? I only eight. saw one of the movies, and then I watched the very last section of the last movie just so Damn. I could find out if Harry Potter died. I'm like, I don't really care. I just want to know if he dies or not. Okay. Well, don't don't leave us hanging, Michelle. What happens? He doesn't die. Oh, oh. God. Really waiting with bated breath there. Jeez. You know, talk Sorry, about somebody listeners. that really knows how to bait the hook. You know what's scary is if there's a listener out there who never watched it and was wondering, they're like, I they had no idea whether or not I was gonna tell them what happened. So now I ruined their movie experience. Forced. Sounds like a real Slytherin thing to do, Michelle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, turkey. Uh, Taco uh, Malfoy over here. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, pretty, that's pretty clever. Yeah, no that's really clever. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is the question that I was uh, humming and hawing over because okay. somebody's going to know this. Oh, good. All right. The worst. I hate that. The worst. All right. Drama musical. Okay. Humphrey Bogart's only Academy Award. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I will check this one. Humphrey Bogart's only Academy la, 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 la. Award. Right. Casablanca. Oh, Matthew. Casablanca. <laughs> Hold on a minute. You were incorrect. All right. You I'll take one point. Enjoying four. <laughs> count them four. Truth or dares. I'll take it. Quattro. Ryan. Ryan, would mm-hmm. you like to guess? Are it, 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 is you there more to that the question? <laughs> What's that? Is there more to that question, or is it just he's oh. got one Academy Award? Oh crap! It was multiple choice, but Matt uh, buzzed in before I could give you the choices. So the choices are: Okay. Casablanca, The African Queen, or The Maltese Falcon. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm, gonna, Ryan. I'm gonna say The Maltese Falcon. You are also incorrect. I hope you enjoy cool. three truth or dares. Nice. All I right. love this. I've this been thinking of the truth or dare. This makes me think of because I've been thinking yeah. about Casablanca a lot because you guys were both talking about it last week on the podcast. Oh, I have God. a copy of it, but I have never watched it. And the, like it's you know, there's like movies that yeah. people are just like, you gotta watch it. And usually I like movies like that, but there's like a couple uh, Casablanca, I've never watched. I feel like I wouldn't like Gone with the Wind. Like every time I am in a situation where I might look at him, like, oh, this looks uh, this looks kind of boring. But I've yeah. never seen it either. I've never seen it either, Ryan. And I have the same wonder if I think I, if I would like it. Honestly, Casablanca I know he doesn't give a damn. Pulls at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about. You well, there should be like a specific name for when the only thing you know about a movie in popular culture is how it ends. You know, like uh, Citizen Kane, Psycho, right, right, right. Uh, I don't know, Feel the Dreams. I don't, you know what I mean? Though that you go into it and you're. I have a hypothesis that nobody's seen Gone with the Wind because that's the one that even like any film buff is a high likelihood that nobody's seen. It's just the same. Like I'd like to see it. Like, I would only want to see it for, like, a cultural, like, touchstone, but I already know all the things about it. Like, I already know that I don't hardly give a cares. I already know the, <laughs> yeah, it was like, the, yeah, it was the, the yeah, the, the, you know, the, the South, the fucking North, I get it. There you have it. But, 
That's a good. That would be a good category, though. I'll put a pin in it for like movies that it's like, for all intent, for like I, sh- you know, movies I should have seen but just never got around to it, mm-hmm. or never. Yeah, there's just some reason why. I just and like, I've I've had those. Yeah, I've had those movies all my life. I have a list. I keep a list. Ooh. Oh yeah, noted, noted. All right, gentlemen. Last one in this card. All right. Which belongs to our horror skiffy category. Skiffy. Skiffy. <laughs> skiffy. You give those nice like... people back their wrench. Skiffy. <laughs> <laughs> don't, that's just skiffy. Don't you pay him any mind. He don't mean you no harm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay him no anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. The Blair Witch Project takes place in the woods of Virginia, Delaware, or Maryland. Uh, uh. Ding, ding, ding. Ryan Arnold. Maryland. You are correct, sir. Nice. It's a three way tie. For the listeners wow. at home, Ooh. if you're keeping track, it's an official three way here with the Dirty Stay House. Menage a three. Wah, wah, wah. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. This is- but Matthew is uh, running away with the uh, the truth or do- dare challenges. Yep. He's got four oh, to Ryan's boy. three to Michelle's prudish one. <laughs> and it's not going to be a dare. <laughs> um all right are we going do you guys want to keep go do we have time wise should we go through a full another round or yeah you think we should do it what do you guys think it's so fun yeah i can't do yeah it! yeah For I, our I, can't, sake, I can't justify not doing it that's how fun yeah. it is listeners indulge us yeah this sorry. is what we want to do we've decided Ow! we if want you- to have fun more than entertain <laughs> If yeah. if you know two things about the dirty stayouts, it's that we love trivia and fuck gone with the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Clark Gable suck it. <laughs> More like Clark unable to hold my attention. Whoa. Wow. More like Scarlet O Who Kara. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I see okay, you there. Okay, we got it, we got okay. it. Okay. Ryan's okay. comedy corner. Venmo him. <laughs> don't get me started. I had a Ryan's whole thing busking on Zoom. Don't, don't even get me started. <laughs> All right, put him pops. The category is comedy cartoon. Ready? Name two of the three lead actors in Three Amigos. Right. We're going to go with Michelle. Yeah, I think that was. Steve Martin, Martin Short. That'll do. That'll do quite nicely. And of course, we have a Chevy Chase in there too for you guys keeping track at home. He didn't get along with Childish Gambino. I didn't want to honor. I didn't want to honor him. I'm a I'm a bit of a Chevy Chaser myself. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God! That's what he calls his fans. I'm I'm, I'm just kidding. He doesn't have any fans. You. I just want to tell you guys this real quick. Where I grew up. Uh, Asshole, when I went, I went to school, there was what did a you call me? family. Yeah, right? <laughs> this guy's on fire, dude. He is this on guy's fire. really come alive. <laughs> there was a whole family called He's drunk with the Van power. Pickups. So yep. there were like Chevy Van Pickups, Ford Van Pickups. Like, oh, the yeah. whole family was named after cars. That's all. Nothing important. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a pretty good You're factoid. Right. Speaking of good factoids, you guys. Next category is a little something we like to call action adventure. What is FBI agent Sean Archer trying to get back in face off? Ryan. Uh, (laughs) He's trying to get his face off. No. (laughs) He's uh, in which in which part? Let's uh, let's see. What is FBI agent Sean Archer trying to get back in face off? It's like a question. It's it's like a like a bomb, like a nuclear code bomb, or so. uh, (laughs) No, that's incorrect. Michelle, do you care to steal? Yes. Was it his daughter? Both incorrect. What the hell? We're gonna pencil you both down for a truth or dare. 
I've got two now, too. So and I'm interested. Yet? Okay. Wait, let me uh, let me Do guess. Want to guess again for, for fun? For his funsies? Wife. What about his wife? His incorrect. job. His incorrect. Face. Double incorrect. <laughs> You're up to 17 truth or dares. <laughs> All right, you guys. We were looking for, and according to the card, he was looking to get back his face. <laughs> what the? That's we I said that. that. I think I said that first. Said that. Did he say that first? Yeah. If so, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. My mistake, then, everyone. My apologies. There are, so there are I so many potential correct answers for that, and I thought it was his face, but there's mm -hmm. other parts of the movie where he's trying to get different things back. That is true. I th I think this this uh, this this question is inaccurate. Is uh, uh, we we reject the premise of this question, but we will give. I sorry, I missed that in the beginning. I'm gonna blame it on a technical malfunction. <laughs> All right. So the score is you guys. Ryan three. Michelle three. Matthew, merely two. Wow. Moving on to drama slash musical. Which actor said, here's looking at you, kid? Meow, 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 meow. Michelle. Humphrey Bogart. The aforementioned Bogart, of course. Mugsy now, looks like as he was known to his friends. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Michelle is bogarting <laughs> the scores in this uh -huh. competition. Hey, Michelle is taking out. Don't bogart that point, my friend. <laughs> We've got a four to a three to a two. Michelle, Ryan, Matthew. All right, everybody. Yeah. Going on to horror sci fi. What droid is entrusted with the whereabouts of Luke Skywalker in me, me, Star me, me, Wars? Me, me. Michelle? C3PO. That is incorrect. Duke. Ryan, do you care to share? <laughs> I is it, Well, it wasn't a multiple choice, so I is R2D2. That is incorrect. Really? What? Oh, you know what? This is unfair. Because uh, Michelle it... chimed in before I was finished reading the question. So let oh. me finish reading the full question to Ryan, and then we'll have another answer. Okay. What droid is entrusted with the whereabouts of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars The Force Awakens? Oh, I <gasps> do not know anything about these newfangled Star Wars. I'm going to... I want to say like it's in there somewhere, but I I don't know like X E three something like that, right? Yeah, it probably is something like that. Something like that. All right, you guys. The answer we are looking for was B B eight. Oh, B B. God damn you, new Star Wars! Haven't you taken enough away? So Michelle will be collecting another uh, truth or dare. And uh, the score is, as we change the reins up to Ryan, we have Michelle at four, Ryan at three, and Matthew at two. Oh, I don't like that. descending I don't like order. That. I don't like that. Not one little bit. I don't like that. All right, Ryan, you're up at bat, baby doll. <laughs> All right. The first, first category is comedy cartoon. And here's the question. True or false? <laughs> Steve Martin both wrote and starred in the 1999 film Bowfinger. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Michelle just for that buzz. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just playing That's with fair. you, Michelle. That's fair. It's so hard. I'm trying to do it lower because he stole it from me. Well, I told he him to do it, it lower. Oh, I told him to I'm go going, low first, yeah, and then I'm you... going low. Oh wait, that's right. Yeah, I'm yeah. afraid to go. You're right. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Classic, classic female, not thinking, blaming <laughs> it on everybody else first. So sorry. Okay. You gotta. <laughs> you made, just, made your bed. I, now you gotta lie in it. Your <laughs> regular Drew Barry tone. <laughs> <laughs> your, your Barry tone bed. <laughs> I'm gonna say that that's true, though. That is true. Yes, correct. Okay, Michelle, commanding lead. Command it. Action adventure, and the question is: What superhero movie depicts power struggle over the African country of Wakanda? Ding ding ding. Meow, 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 meow. Matthew. Uh, it oh, might be wow. a frequency Black thing. For so, I I don't know why I'm so insecure about this not being right. The, the right name of the movie, but it's Black Panther, right? It is Black Panther. Yeah. I was I was I just thought of like I just realized like the name of what that movie is. I'm like, surely a movie can't be named Black Panther. I always get in my head right at answer time. I'm gonna take the point for that. Whew. In the category of drama musical, 
<laughs> Lawrence Olivier plays an aging Nazi hunter after Gregory Peck in what movie? Deafening silence. Total. Uh, I think I heard Michelle buzz in. Michelle? Michelle? <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't want to get a truth or dare. <laughs> the answers. No, no, no! You aren't going to get me, mister. Although, now, I, now that you put, because I love the spotlight, now I feel like I want to give you an answer. But That's I still the answer, know. baby. The answer yeah, is... I don't... Rent. What? No, it's, it's not. It's not. I, I love it. <laughs> what? <laughs> six million, six million, six million, six million Jews. <laughs> the answer is the, the boys from Brazil. Boys I have no idea. Brazil. Okay. No idea. Perfect. I'm glad it wasn't one that I knew and then would have been furious. Yeah. The the relief when you're doing like a trivia and you think that it's something that's stuck in your brain and then you hear the yep. correct answer and you're like, oh, thank God. I never, ever knew that. That never went anywhere near there. Beautiful. Yeah. Legendary. Horror or sci-fi. Here we go. Ooh. What was the 2012 prequel to Alien called? Here's a hint. I have not seen it. <laughs> Michelle, are you okay? <laughs> it's between my buzzer and doing Bobcat Coldweight at this point. Like, meow, 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 meow. I wanted to answer, <laughs> answer it. Okay, I'm going to let you answer, but first I want everybody to do a quick Bobcat Coldweight. Matthew, you got one? Cool. Of course I do. <laughs> I try to get in this police academy. <laughs> Beautiful. I liked it. Thank you. All right, here's, here, I'm gonna, here's my Bobcat gold plate. Right? Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Now, All right. back to the question 2012 oh. prequel to Alien. What was it called? I want to. I'm gonna steal it, Matthew. It was not Homecoming. Fuck. I'm gonna get. Was it Alien Three? <laughs> Jerk. Matthew. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. What's the, the answer? Everybody? The answer is uh, Prometheus. Prometheus. Ah. There's so many alien movies. Why would you need a prequel? You know, there and most many. of them are good. Most of them are good. Homecoming. Not close. That would be <laughs> Alien Homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> alien colon Homecoming. And they're all in pretty dresses, dancing to the slow Bon Jovi song. Can I tell you what I picture when I hear the title Alien colon Homecoming? It's yeah. a it's it's a coming of age like a regular coming of age teen sex comedy except it's all xenomorphs from the movie <laughs> franchise aliens so like it's definitely either the last week of school or it's uh prom week and i think i'm gonna go i think i'm gonna go last week of school because all the aliens are uh they're going off to invade planets and enslave races and they're basically like, all I want to do is get laid before I, because it's a, anyway. <laughs> Wait, what about this could be a line in it? <laughs> no, I can't, I can't, I can't follow through with it. Oh, oh, I, I gotta... was going to do, okay, go for it. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, uh, okay, so the, these two uh, aliens <laughs> are making out and things are getting hot and heavy in the, in the car and they're kissing and their two little uh, little mouths, you know, come yep. out of uh, of the the like and they, they start kissing and stuff. And uh, and then the girl alien, I don't know how the gender works for the aliens, but <laughs> one of the aliens slaps him, you know, in disgust. And uh, her her little mouth goes back inside, and he was like, "I was just trying to get a little head, because it's a little." 
<laughs> Perfect. I'm I was sorry. gonna do. I was gonna try to make <laughs> ET work because you know how said ET says uh, phone home, and then the movie's called Homecoming. But I was like, surely there's got to be something. But it turns out there was not. There was nothing, mm-hmm. and that's why I much like. Um, like in Top Gun before me, I, I had to punch out. I had to punch out of my joke, you guys. Well, and for that, you're welcome. <laughs> E.T. is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's like the best. It, I can't talk. Oh my God, I almost started getting really emotional talking about E.T. Let's move on. Do you remember when they on. put out that uh, like alternate version of E.T. where Steven Spielberg... Uh, edited out all of the guns and replaced them with walkie talkies and was like, I know what the oh, people want. Yeah, they yeah, want yeah, a yeah. version of my classic movies that is uh, digitally altered to be more PC. That's what the kids want. Yeah, those guys, those those aging directors have some odd instincts, I'll tell you what. We're never going to put out a special edition of this podcast. We're just going to leave it frozen in amber oh, like the Jurassic Park uh, mosquito. <laughs> directors cut all of it, baby. All directors. Heart of Darkness, the podcast. All right. All right. So that was the that was that the final one, my friend. That was my final one. Yes. So then we move to the final. So just Michelle, you're gonna take us around. We have a very content. We have a hotly. <laughs> Uh, content, contentious game? I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to be a host. Michelle is at five. Matthew and Ryan are all tied up three to three. So the question is, can Matthew or Ryan get more than two to overtake Michelle? And that, or else Michelle is uh, the, uh, the, 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 for, wow. I, I have a newfound respect for Chuck Woolery because I cannot describe these simple facts. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. I have to tell you, this 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 last leg of it makes me really friggin' anxious because I'm gonna be watching either my own defeat That's or right. my victory. So it's like I get to watch you two like clamor to beat the hell out of me. Basically. And there's nothing you can do. Yep, there's nothing you can do about nothing it. Nothing I can do, Matthew. No, nothing I can do. All right. I was gonna say something, but I forgot. Stakes are high. The loser. Whoever gets the least the, the, the least amount of points is going to be hunted for sport. Uh, predator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take an honorary point. Matt gets a point <laughs> for that. Okay. Comedy cartoon. All right. <laughs> Comedy cartoon. Who co-wrote, directed, and starred in 2003's Head of State? Ding, ding, Great. ding, ding. Matthew. Uh, Chris Rock. Yeah. Yeah, Jeez. boy. Oh, my God. Is Matt going to fucking beat me? All right. Here we go. Action adventure. I just want to get this over with because I just want to know my fate at this juncture. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> so, Humphrey Bogart. All right. So what does Skyfall refer to in the James Bond movie Skyfall? Ugh. I like this question. I don't. I, I don't have. That. I don't know any James Bond stuff. I'm gonna. I don't. Know the, I don't know the answer, but I know this. Skyfall. Why will the sky always fall? <laughs> um. I don't know the answer either. <laughs> I, 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 I'll have a guess. I'll go. Arr. My guess is uh, some kind of helicopter. In, incorrect. Black, Black Hawk Down. I'm not gonna wait. Skyfall. I'm not gonna adventure a guess, but I does that have something to do with a casino or? All right, what's the answer, boss? Casino or, I uh, know his family estate is what it has to do with. Okay. What? Oh, boring. Estate. That question sucks. Not as much as the answer, though. Yes. Yeah. Too bad. Too oh, bad yeah, things. Next, Way to go, question. Michelle. <laughs> bad question. Bad answer. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Anything I can do. This next question I'm reading, though, is making me nervous. Oh, good. This is making me nervous. Drama, musical. Listeners at home, I want to make sure, listeners at home, that we still have you in mind. I hope you're playing along with us and watching my slow upcoming defeat. Uh, Drama, musical. What John Wayne classic was remade by the Coen brothers? Uh, uh, 
Ryan. True grit. You are Damn, correct, son. sir. Okay, okay. All right, last one. So the best that could happen is a tie. Correct. Just like on Christmas morning for dads. <laughs> wow, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, is that from personal experience? Uh, no, people don't. People don't generally get me ties because they see that I don't wear them. But <laughs> kind of what I thought. Kind of what I thought. Mm. Something people knew you a little better. All right, horror <laughs> sci-fi. In uh, Interview with a Vampire, what gift does Lestat give Claudia every year? <laughs> ding ding ding. Ryan. Uh, uh the booty. Can you please clarify what that is? Like, booty. The booty uh, could be like pirate's bounty, it could be a butt. Yep, yeah, I meant uh, their ass. Yeah, no. I, I haven't I seen love, that one, sorry. I love the answer, but that's going to be... You are looking for truth or dare, aren't you, Ryan? Because you found uh, four of them, sweetheart. You found four of them. Four of them. <laughs> G yep. Come on, give me some dare. <laughs> you, 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 you lost the truth. All right. Ryan, I mean, Matthew, do you want to take this or are you all set? I'll, I'll venture a guess. Because if you get it wrong, you're also going to get another truth or dare. Is it, a, like, a, is it a flower of some nature? It is not of any nature a flower. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I'll take a truth or dare then. You will take five of them in total. You're right. So maybe that should be the next episode is the Dirty Stayouts cash all in truth on or all dare. the truth or dare. <laughs> yeah. Nicknamed Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I've only got three. I've only got three. I got you down for four. But maybe I, but who's keeping track? <laughs> I feel like I should honor four then. Because if I'm keeping my own track and I'm lower than yours, then that's bad accounting on my part. So we'll do four, Matt. Michelle, four. I think Matthew. we have a winner. I think we have a grand prize winner tonight. Who's that, Matthew? I think we'll have to, unfortunately, much to our chagrin, Ryan and I will have to give it up. Take a bow to your new champion, Michelle Nasty Bitch Gross Taco Tellerico. <laughs> Damn it, Matthew. You don't just throw Gross Taco in there. It would have been awesome without that. Well, we already engraved the trophy, so. <laughs> Day late, a dollar short, baby. Hey guys, speaking of gross taco, can I take a pee break real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Dehydrated taco, or the opposite way. All right, pee, a round of pee breaks, all of us? Is that? Yeah, sure. You, you, you down? All right, here we go. I get a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a new seltzer is what I'm gonna Love do. Love it. <laughs> Final segment time, guys. Final segment time. Let's reel it in with our... Jerry's thought. final thought. Jerry's final thought, that's right. And Jerry's final thought this evening is... Hey, guys. Go what on. are the top three Nicolas Cage movies? Oh, um, oh interesting choice. Interesting yep. choice. I happen to have a list out of my fingertips. All right, let's ah, go around really? number threes. Number threes, baby, with number a bullet. Number threes. Wow, that's, I can't do that with my mouth. Let's uh, go. Uh, you can. Uh, Try it. It's your tongue. Uh, uh, I can't right. keep it going. I can roll it. I can just do a quick sputter like a Tommy gun. Uh, 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 but I can't keep it going. Uh, a little braggadocia. Are we going to have a R rolling contest? Yep, let's like, do it right now. Like can a we? bunch of hillbillies? Yeah, yeah. Yep, count us off. Let's do it. All right, here you go. Three, two, one, go. I didn't prepare. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lady got a mouth like an outboard motor. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to have the last word. Thank you, Matt Woodland. <laughs> He always has something good to contribute. Number three. <laughs> over there. I love how I love how Michelle is like just also like built in commentary for the podcast. Something <laughs> will happen and then a full just you're like those 
you're like what like that special feature for like deaf people where they describe like every like the subtext of like each and every little thing that sounds like a great special feature to have cool. sign me up. i'll say what's your top three man we're lucky top three nicholas uh, what's your number three for matthew yeah matthew goes like this so yeah. i wanted uh, my my number three choice is a pretty is kind of a different tone and in, in a different vein than my top two, which will be. But my first one of my first like childhood foyers into the world of Nicolas Cage has to be none other than the movie known as The Rock, my friend. Oh, The Rock was definitely definitely one where that was like where I think I think even before Face Off or whatever that was around the time that I was introduced to. I uh, uh, Nick Cage, as I call him, in a big way. So I have to. That was. I remember me, like my my friends Ben Schneer. We it was like it was like appointment viewing. We would have specific like let's have a little birthday party so we can watch The Rock, and eat uh, I don't know gummy gummy worms. I don't know what the I don't know what mm. punk kids do, but yeah, if I'm uh, uh, yeah with uh, without further uh, with uh, no further explanation needed. Uh, the Rock, final answer. Thank you. I I happen to know that The Rock is my uh my brother's favorite Nicolas Cage movie and I mm. when he told me that because I was in like a real Nicolas Cage like movie binge for whatever reason I was like oh I think I missed The Rock for whatever reason and so I, I tracked it down on a VHS and I went home and watched it and I was like I didn't like this that much like the things that I find that I like about Nicolas mm -hmm. Cage and his choices and his acting was yep. altogether missing from the movie The Rock for for me yeah no it, 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 I, it absolutely is for me the rock is just like a pretty much an homage to my childhood that was just like this yeah. is i remember we loved it as a kid i'm sure i've never went back and watched it and yeah i totally agree. like the like the wild like exaggeration like pronunciation all everything that makes nick cage wonderful as an adult is really not in this movie whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, number three. What do you number got? Number three, babe. Number three. Honeymoon Traso. in Vegas. Oh. Ah, uh, Honeymoon in Vegas. What was that, though? Hold on a minute, Ryan. I Ryan. said Traso. I said Traso. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was, what are you talking I, it, about? I, it's like a funny uh, miss, like how a dumb person would say three in Spanish, you know? Right. <laughs> Treso. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, that was a fucking bird. That was, that was the bird of all birds. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> the bird, the person who will, the person who will just like get behind any idea, anything you say with like exuberate, like just like enthusiasm, exuberation. You get a, you get a cool. You oh wait a minute, are we hitting into the hangry hour? <laughs> uh oh, no, I Wendy's ate, I, top of mind. <laughs> darling, I ate a high fiber diet all day today in anticipation of your boys. So. <laughs> No, no. Actually, right. I'm I'm sweet I'm as pie it. right now. Oh, good. I'm as sweet as pie right now. No hangriness coming to the surface. But yes, honeymoon in Vegas is my third one. I think for the same reason. It's uh, something that my brother, my brother and I, we used to get. Uh, we were latchkey kids because my mom was a single mom and she'd go to work from like ten at night. She'd come home at six in the morning, and my brother and I would be like, "Yeah, mom, we're going to bed at ten o'clock." We would stay up until like two in the morning watching movies on the movie channel. And Honeymoon in Vegas would be on like almost every night. So we'd stay up and that would be like one that we would watch every other night. And it's such a great story too, because it's uh, Nicolas Cage and Jessica Parker playing a couple. They want to get married, but they go to Vegas and Jessica Parker runs into James Caan and James Caan steals Jessica Parker. Oh, Michelle Sonny vomiting. from The Godfather? No, thank you. Look. <laughs> With, Jimmy, know, was it Jimmy, not Sonny? No, no, I was, I was saying J James Con. I call him Jimmy. Ah, Jimmy. Yeah, like if I was gonna, I'd be like, hey, Jimmy, can you give me another one of those, uh, you know, fancy chickens? Cool. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> two for Tuesday, dude. This is. Gonna, I yeah, am no. really getting it. <laughs> she is. She is gonna. <laughs> systematically dismantle your whole self-esteem process you're, you're next, next time you look in the mirror you're gonna start to quiver i feel like we're in a rap battle <laughs> <laughs>
Cool. <laughs> Only I'm like the passive aggressive rapper. I'm just like. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's a good movie. It's a good movie, and uh, it it ends with uh, I don't want to say what it ends with, but he basically plays a Elvis impersonator at the end to get the girl back. So it's really ah, a sweet movie. Yes. It's very sweet. It's a sweet love story. But I always get grossed out that wrinkly James Khan gets. Sarah Jessica Parker. I always thought Sarah Jessica Parker, by the way, side note, is a very beautiful woman. Everybody picks on her and they think that she's not attractive. You hear a lot of people say she's not attractive. I don't feel that way. I always thought she was very pretty. Done. Yeah, true. Mic drop. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Thanks, guys. My number three is a movie called Vampire's Kiss. And oh. it is a movie in which Nicholas Cage plays a literary agent who is a real piece of shit. He uh, mistreats his employees. He talks with a weird, high pitched, uh, uh, fake British accent for whatever reason. And he uh, goes out to a club and he meets a girl doing coke in the bathroom and they go home. And while he's having sex with her, uh, he's attacked by a, a, a bat and the bat flies in and he imagines that he's been bitten by the bat and so he starts to believe that he's turning into a vampire and uh, at one point he becomes near like homeless he's just in the in the streets with trying to get people to put wooden stakes through his heart so that they'll stop him and he's just screaming he's not showing he's telling and he screams i'm a vampire i am a vampire <laughs> <laughs> really uh a lot of uh, uh like classic one of the first uh things times we see like a classic nick cage that overacts and over enunciates yep. and makes I, I think the thing we love about nick cage is that he makes he really commits he makes these choices that are insane but he commits to them so much that it almost makes these ridiculous characters seem real and these ridiculous performances seem grounded somehow and uh, uh big big fan i recommend vampire's kiss Vampire, i gotta jot that down never never heard it never heard of the flick myself i'm jotting it down right now jot it down jot it i will jot it down i don't i I, I'll, I'll jot it down after after the pod. It's uh, I have a list ongoing. For, if you must know, I have an ongoing list on my phone. But then I wouldn't be able. Then I'd be distracted. I'm not judging <laughs> you, just so you know. I mean, those explanations, Matt, coming pretty hard and fast. Oh, we're going to we're running. We're, we're coming into number two. Am I wrong? Doso. Yep. Doso, Michelle, comment. Do Doso. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it now. <laughs> like the dance. Doso, 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 do. <laughs> That's a kind of, it's, it's a waltz. It's like a, it's a waltz at like a quinceanera. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. All right, everybody. I'll be here. I'll be, I'll be here all the weekend. You guys. So now for, for, for my next, my next two movies, we're moving out of any vein because there's a lot of there's this thing, the newfangled thing that the kids like to do is enjoy Nicolas Cage and his movies ironically and kind of like I really like like, you know, your face offs would fall in that category mm -hmm. like like wonderful movie. You can never say it's but you would never say it's a good movie. And like so there's these weird categories. The next two Nicolas Cage movies are sincerely great movies, in my humble opinion. And it's got some a nice dose of uh, Nicolas Cage, how we enjoy him. I'm worried I, there's going to be some overlap. I think that, no. there very much could be. I bet there's going to. All right. My number two Nicolas Cage movie, a little Charlie Kaufman joint known as Adaptation. Everybody. Oh, so good. A little Adaptation. A and they, he plays a double, much like Eddie Murphy before him in The Clumps. He plays uh, two two roles, very uh, similar kind of characters, but uh, Nicolas Cage and his brother. And uh, well, um, I've never been good at summarizing movies and describing them. That's like, that's Ryan's, that's Ryan's job. But that's, that's my movie. And if you feel, feel free to add any more insight that you may like. Thank you guys. Adaptation. Awesome movie. That's a good choice. I, objectively good movie yes it's film i don't want to hear anybody's opinion <laughs> this is a good movie 
Look, we're not talking <laughs> about corn. We're talking about adaptation. It's a great right. movie. That's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. We agree. <laughs> I got. I went down a members of corn talking about past crystal meth use YouTube rabbit hole today. I don't even know how it happened. (laughs) Michelle, number two, what do you got? All right, my number two is actually Matthew's number three. It's The Rock. Oh wow, interesting. The Rock making a surprisingly high showing today. I like. I actually. I really enjoy The Rock. Um, I like that Sean Connery's in it. I, I don't think I like it just for Nicolas Cage, though. It's one right. of his good movies, better movies. See, I gauge Nicolas Cage movies because the older they are, the more I can tolerate them. I think that where <laughs> I, I think where I drop off is probably National Treasure. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not going to like I'm my number one, one then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not judging. Just so you know, though, no judgments. But I also want to point out... I especially like The Rock because I was a huge General Hospital fan and the girl who plays his girlfriend who is smoking hot Mm -hmm. that is Vanessa Marcille. She was my favorite character on General Hospital. She played Brenda and she was smoking. So that's my two cents on The Rock. Thank you. I'll take it. Nice. Nice. All right. that, That brings it back to Doso. For me, also with a bullet, my friend. Uh, my number two movie is one of my one of my favorite movies of all time, and that that's something called uh, Bad Lieutenant, Port of yes. Call, New Orleans. Yep. Now, this movie is directed by Werner Herzog, and it stars Nicolas Cage and Val Kilmer, who are so good together as like corrupt uh, Louisiana cops, and uh, Feruza Balks in it as well. This is a great fucking movie on on every level and I couldn't describe it any more than to say like when you know uh, a bunch of different elements that you like comes together it has the possibility of being really good but has the potential to have a, a too many cooks in the kitchen type deal and just be a total load of shit. And uh, this, this movie's pretty awesome. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Bad Lieutenant. Well it has also has nothing to do with the movie Bad Lieutenant. It, it, you would right. think that <laughs> I was well. That's a, I was that when when I heard this was coming out, I was like, in like I probably had the attitude like, oh, they're remaking Arthur, they're remaking <laughs> the Pink Panther, <laughs> now Bad Lieutenant. Because I, I remember I heard it and I just like I turned my nose up because I'm like, oh, they're remaking Bad Lieutenant. Which you know I've always I do a great Harvey Keitel from Bad Lieutenant. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, hey, beautiful girls, Kit Kat Club, where you going tonight? Show me how you suck a guy's cock. <laughs> 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 Show me with your mouth. Harvey Cartel. Well, beautiful girls. Kit Kat Club. <laughs> but that's not the bad lieutenant we're talking about. But yes, He's a similar I, I, bad lieutenant. <laughs> they're, well, they're 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 bad at being a lieutenant. Like they don't like withhold, like they don't upheld the criteria for being a lieutenant. They steal, say. they do drugs, yeah. they have affairs. I think exhibits in it. I think exhibit plays a drug lord. That's, sounds about right. In it. It's just got everything. It's very it like overloads. They're these uh scenes in between where there's just like lizards wandering around for no reason yep you know it's like real spacey it has all of the sort of hallmarks of an independent movie while having the resources and the cast of like a big hollywood movie i'd say it's right in the sweet spot Uh, i think i would have to concur and we got some great uh drug fueled nicholas cage freakouts yeah love it love it that was a movie that came <laughs> that movie came, yeah, right to mind when I was making the top three. And then I'm just like, yeah, a little bit of an arbitrary choice for, for my for my for my top two, but good Fair point. Enough. Good call. Good call, my friend. <laughs> uh where where do we stand? Is this Matthew's turn? Number one. Yeah, number one. Number one with a bullet? Uno. Yeah, uh, uns, gonna... Unso no. Unso no. Wait, yep. I'm gonna Uno. It's with bullets. Yeah. <laughs> I I just remembered. I just remembered. Oh yeah, we had a whole thing about that. No, (laughs) just with bullets. I remember that. All right, you guys. My number one, and this this is again. This is like an undisputable. And this this is uh, the these directors. This is uh, at a top of a lot of their lists. This is a lot of lot of people's favorite. I can't decide if this is number one or number two. 
for my favorite Coen Brothers movie, but certainly for Nicolas Cage, I'm going to have to go with Raising Arizona, everybody. Oh, yeah. So yes, undeniably so good. genius. And probably, I, I always oscillate between Raising Arizona and Fargo for my, if you must know, for my favorite uh, Coen Brothers. That's just, that's just where I'm at with those. But oh, just Nicolas Cage and what? What is it? A uh, Holly Hunter? Holly Hunter. I always, I always mix up her name. She's so great. So fucking. So what a cute little guy and that fucking baby. I just recently watched that movie again. <laughs> That's Every, one of my so funny. Just like good. One Lord. of my funny. one of my favorite John Goodmans too. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh good. Back before he sold out. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, Holly Hunter is so great. I, my favorite, so like, anytime time she has an emotional breakdown, she's like, I love him so much. Yeah. And then Nicholas Cage. Hmm. Good one. Number one with a bullet. Michelle? My, my Michelle. number one with a bullet. I don't know oh. if this will be a mystery to anybody, but it's Moonstruck. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it it is. It's, a good, it's a good movie. Yeah, it's good, good, so good. good. Like yep. his range. Like I actually think that this is a good movie for him, where he actually did some of his best acting. His range, even as like the very melodramatic Ronnie Camerary. Like I, I. That's one of my favorite scenes. I have two favorite scenes from the movie that are solely Nick Cage like run. It's the bread when when uh, Cher's character goes down to visit him in the bakery in the basement. And he's like, get me a knife, Chrissy. Get me a knife. I <laughs> wanted to see me slip my throat so she could run back and tell my brother that I didn't want to. Nice. All right. Nice, Matt. I see what you're doing. <laughs> you know, listeners, I get distracted when these boys put chapstick on, and I wish I didn't. <laughs> I don't know what my draw is. Matt's just glossing up his lips, guessing, making just, himself look real nice. I was just powdering my nose. <laughs> just powdering his nose a little. Um. So, if you were so inclined, there's got to be like a lane of like Instagram or TikTok where you could just watch videos of of guys uh, bombing uh, doing, it up. I've bombing it up. You just yeah. came up with a. That's it. Bombing it up. I'm gonna take a break bomb. from bombing up with you guys. I'm gonna finish my thoughts on Moonstruck. Hashtag bomb. bombs away. It does get dry. I get it. It is dry. It's winter. Our okay. lips are dry. But he says one of my most favorite i actually have somebody who's making me something to hang up in my new craft room my favorite movie line of all times comes from nicholas cage don't you mean your knit so... room <laughs> <laughs> it's my writing room look i'm a knitter and a writer ryan and i don't oh. mind keeping those two fields separate but equal <laughs> <laughs> But, but anyways, my favorite line in that, of, of uh, Moonstruck, because he's so passionate. It's like one of his more passionate characters. When they're walking home from the Met and he tricks Loretta into going back to his apartment and he's trying to get her to go upstairs with him. And she's basically saying, no, we're doing something bad. He goes, look, playing it safe is the most dangerous thing a woman like you can do. And I actually have somebody making uh, something for me to hang on my wall in my writing room that says that because... The way he says it delivered perfectly, and it just is like, I think every woman should take that line. My personal thoughts, and then just hold it to heart because, yeah, Nick Cage said it. I really started to go tangential on that. I'm lost now. I'm lost. I'm lost. Come back. Space now. Come back. All right. Anyways, that's why I like Moonstruck. <laughs> Nick Cage does a great job, and that's my yeah, favorite well, line. Good choice. Nice. Thanks. Sorry. All right. Hey well, Arnold, <laughs> number one with uh with a, a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> my my favorite Nick Cage movie is uh is called Bringing Out the Dead. Oh wow wow wow! Yeah, you know this yep, yep. I don't know how popular this movie is in the greater scheme either of Nicolas Cage movies or uh, Martin Scorsese movies. But uh, but like uh, like raising Arizona, it also uh, is a one of my favorite John Goodman performances. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you if you if you don't know this is a movie where Nicolas Cage is a nineteen uh, nineties New York City ambulance driver, and in a, a part of Hell's Kitchen where they are very overworked, where uh, he stays up all night, uh, he doesn't eat food, he just drinks whiskey and coffee. Mm -hmm. 
and they zoom around all over the place trying to save people's lives while uh you know like cool music it's got a great soundtrack got uh what's the frequency kenneth by rem there you got go. uh definitely got some kind of uh, i think dead flowers by the rolling stones is on there there's some like johnny thunders and the heartbreakers and uh great great performance great ensemble cast i think nicholas cage is really good when he's part of like a big ensemble cast because he's such a uh, like a crazy actor in terms of like his his power it it it's better when it's complemented by lots of different different points so that he's not like carrying the whole thing because then he, he's sort of free to just uh uh go off nice yeah i can yeah. i concur yeah Bam. i agree with that right Bam. it's like it's like nick cage works best when it's the movie is like a casserole when there's a lot yeah, of, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. Ooh, a lot of different people baked yeah. in together. Kind of better. He's like he's like a spicy pepper, you know. And if if it was just all there you go, like yep. Nicolas Cage one man show, he'd be like, God damn, this is a little much, you know. You need you need some you need, some, uh, you need some noodles, some sauce to to really bring it bring it out with with its own. Uh, uh, shit going on. It's got to be cut a little bit. Get the baby powder out. A little dilute, a little dilution, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <sighs> That's it. That's <sighs> it. We did it. <laughs> we did it, listeners. We have what a workload! Oh. Ow! Ow! Arduous. Showbiz. After a long, hard day of podcasting, I like to wind back at the end <laughs> with a nice cool sticky glass of girl you to bomb i can't put any more of this stuff on because this is <laughs> very colored it's god <laughs> ryan and so you man shiny. you both wear way too much listeners they wear too way much too much fun. chapstick i'm gonna take a strong opinion on this i have listeners i've used Burt's bees i use it every once in a while to keep a nice color to my lips these guys use theirs more than I use mine. They're going to make themselves sick. Look at Ryan flaunting it. Nice <laughs> teeth. Heavens to Mercatroids, Ryan. Those yes. are like models. Those are like models' lips, bro. <laughs> I know. He could be a lip model. Listeners, don't come around trying to kiss the dirty stayouts despite their appearance of uh, smooth, sheeny lips. Honestly, our lips look like you went over them with a floor buffer. They're so reflective and if you if you shined a a light onto one of our lips it could definitely blind you with the refractory light beams and then you'd be mm -hmm. fucking blind and people right. would be like oh my god <laughs> what happened to you and you'd be like oh shit i was checking out this cool podcast and they were putting on too much chapstick and then bam my eyeballs exploded but that's good because you don't need your stupid eyeballs to listen to this podcast if you, learned any, if you learned anything else about the stay outs this evening, it's we hate rape, but we love a glossy lip. The All right. What, you know. One last quick thing. Let's do the top 10 list. <laughs> <laughs> top 10 Barry Manilow songs, starting with Ryan. I think I know two Barry Manilow songs, right? He did Mandy and Copacabana. I think those are the only two I know. I What's the third? The songs the world sings. Oh, is that him? Shit. <laughs> Mandy, that Mandy's also a pretty interesting uh, recent uh, Nicolas Cage movie. Oh hell yeah! yeah it is nice. Yeah, weird how these things just kind of just tie in. And <laughs> it's like... all everything's tied together, man. You I think you did first. that on purpose, Michelle. I think you're trying to make us look like. Uh... <laughs> what's what's the opposite of making us look like a chump? What's chump backwards? You're trying to make us look like a. Puck -puck. Puck -puck. Puck -puck. Yeah. I have no idea, but listeners, <laughs> this has been, I hope you find a scintillating evening of taco talk, delicious, deep, dirty taco talk. Dirty I hope tacos. I hope you figure out your little yeah. time you're quandering. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, at the, in, the, in the beginning uh, of the show, I was thinking, I was like, oh, you've seen a talk show. Now this will be a talk show, like a, a, like a taco, but talk yeah. yeah, that's good. I like that. 
cool. That's what that's what it is. That's exactly what we are. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, wait, no, no, Michelle. Wait, what, what's your line? Your the phrase that pays? Shit on me. Oh, you! I never. It's it's that wasn't fair because you have infinity catchphrases. I just your most recent you, one. Oh, um, that's cool. The funniest cool. thing. This is my my this is my final thought of the night, is that uh -huh. there have been great people like smart people with philosophies and views on the world, like real intelligent trailblazing people that had things to say and said a million things during their lives. They never got written down. They didn't have recorders during their lifetime and will be lost forever to time. And yet every stupid thing that pops into any of our heads right. will be preserved forever in perpetuity through for Martians and demons and That's bog right. goblins and stuff. I mean, this is our immortality. And I guess I'm just saying it's funny because we have done nothing to deserve it. <laughs> you know, I have to say and that. What's that? What's that? My phrase that pays. Oh. Oh, fuck, dude. Damn. You just had this like philosophical, just like really like trophy winning astute observation of society and the evolution wow, wow, wow. of it. Or should I say de-evolution of it, uh, like uh, the band uh, Whip It might say. Um, and then she gives you a fucking cool, a fucking no cell, just twirling her finger like so many batons before it. Cool. All right, music man, I see you. Just because I know that Matt was waiting for me to say it, I can feel the anticipation. Cool.